Hi, my name is Ken McGrath from the AGRF and the purpose of this clip is to run you through some examples of common problems with Sanger sequencing and what you can do to get a better result. For troubleshooting the Sanger reads we'll be using the software Sequence Scanner. Check out our other videos to see a quick run through on how to use the software. So first we're going to open up an example of a good read. You can see the peaks are nice and clean and well separated. The clean read gets out well past 800 base pairs, which is typical of a good run. During the raw intensities, shows a nice bright signal with intensities above the 2000 relative fluorescent units level. There is also a gentle slope of signal along the read, which is indicative of a good ratio of template and primer in the reaction. This next example is a sequence that shows a delayed injection. Now viewing the electrophorogram may look like a failed read with no signal visible. But viewing the raw reads shows some peaks appearing at the very end of the run where they appear wide and wavy. This is a classic indicator of a delay. Delays happen when a charged contaminant is present in the read causing the labelled DNA fragments to run slower. Common contaminants are ethanol and salt, which are often left over during extraction and purification. Always be sure to dry your DNA well prior to resuspending or eluting in pure water, and never use the elution buffers that come with the extraction kits. This overload example shows what happens when too much template is used for sequencing. The signal that is generated is very bright and it overloads the machine's ability to detect the peaks. These overloaded sequences are messy with very low quality base calls. The raw view of this shows a flat top effect with all the peaks maxing out on the detector and the relative fluorescent units being above 30,000. Using less template in this submission or reaction will result in a much cleaner read and bring those peak levels down into the detectable window between 1000 and 30,000 RFU. Finally, this example shows what happens if the secondary structure of the DNA falls into a hairpin. The read will start well, but at some point during the sequence it drops away to nothing. Often what happens is that GC-rich or palindromic regions can fold back on themselves, preventing the sequencing enzyme from getting through that region and generating larger products. To overcome this, the addition of solvents to the submission, such as DMSO or betaine, can help dissolve the hairpin and keep it apart, which allows the sequencing to proceed through that region and give longer product reads. Now there are many more indicators in results that can suggest how to improve the reads. So if you find you are having any problems at all, please get in touch and we can assist you. Thanks for watching.